Welcome back, viewer, to Chungu Chajami. Today we are talking about adults and continuing education. What have you learned so far? Just in case you're joining in, you've missed a lot, but you can still sit back and listen on the tips on how to embrace adults and continuing education. If you have a grandparent, if you have a senior citizen who is not learned, you should embrace them and push them to be able to be learned as you are so that you are able to bridge the gap in between and will have a better tomorrow in interaction, in social empowerment, in uh, matters to do with family decision making. These are some of the things that we face and we find that we have a challenge on the same. Send in your question, your comments across all our social media networks. That's GBS TV Africa. Our SMS line is two double one double four. So, um, before we went on a break, we had tackled issues to do with uh, um, giving credits to where credits due, giving honor to where honor is due, and also as a young person educating the senior citizen. Now. My question comes, now that we're in Nairobi, we're in a metropolitan area where culture is diverse. We have people of different cultures and you also have these centers that you cannot structure them in a certain culture. How does culture play a role in all this? Now, I'm looking at it at um, um, cultural leaders. We have different cultures and the diversity. When they come to class, maybe this is a chief from area A, they are the certain ways they do, and we have also, like you had mentioned, the differences in these people. How do you bring them as a teacher together for them to be neutral in class and not have the differences, and where there are differences to have a common ground in understanding? Thank you for asking that question. I'll take you back to the goals of education, uh, whereby we want to create uh, consciousness, mm -hmm. cultural consciousness mm -hmm. to everyone. So with Nairobi being a metropolitan uh, county, you find different cultures, and those enrich now you are learning better. Mm -hmm. Because then you bring uh, it as a learning lesson. This culture, uh, their cultural beliefs, that becomes a lesson in class. Mm -hmm. Then you, you get uh, your learners to understand uh, that we are coming from different cultures, and then we need to respect people's cultures and beliefs for us to coexist well. And again, that could be a way of now documenting the things that now we are supposed to pass to our other generation. Remember. In Nairobi, uh, the language, uh, the cultural practices are not big here. Sure. So we can uh, document those things and then we help our upcoming children to understand their culture and where they are coming from and then embrace uh, from our learners. We can encourage them, go teach your learners, your, your kids at home so that that will be cascaded back to school, and then the generation now uh, continues with uh, embracing our culture. So <clears throat> we, we, we use that to our advantage in that uh, because we have different cultures, then we bring them together to make a beautiful uh, cultural uh, learning session so that we also uh, be in a position to, uh, like, uh, preserve our culture. Mm -hmm. And then also remember, mm -hmm. culture is not static, and there is no supreme culture. So, um, I need to understand, other than tapping into those rich cultural values, mm -hmm. Nairobi has its own culture, which is different from the culture in Mombasa, which is different from the culture in Kisumu. So Nairobi culture will come from these various cultures that they'll come up with something that is beautiful that is suitable to make them coexist in Nairobi well and then they whatever if I cannot borrow from you 
what you came from the village, which, that which is not comfortable with me, mm -hmm. we'll leave it aside. Mm -hmm. But that one that we can blend and use it, we'll use the Asian, pick something from the Asians, pick something from the whites, pick from Gikuyus, pick from Luyas, pick from Luas, everything. And then come up with something that is beautiful, be it in food, clothing, music, mm -hmm. and all that, we blend. Mm -hmm. Then that which is now rooted back in the village, I will teach my children so that whenever they go back, they are able to cope. Mm -hmm. So it's it's something that brings out a beautiful blend. And when we'll be having our ILD, mm -hmm. you will see various things here that you will learn a lot from it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> as uh, I was going through this topic of today, um, there's something that I came across, and uh, there's this... Um, international literacy awareness or something and I was thinking when we are talking about literacy it's a matter of knowing uh, you mentioned before that you are all illiterate just depending with the level of illiteracy that you are accorded what do we look forward when you are talking about international literacy what is this literacy that are we supposed to have or is one a sup supposed to be accorded to be known that one is literate and one is not literate we go I take you back to that aspect when we are celebrating international literacy day we are not saying that we are been putting that this one is literate and this one is not literate First and foremost, that day we are celebrating those who have taken the courage and come to class despite having not been there. They have come in their, their old age they are or whatever age they are able to read, write and do simple arithmetic. That is basic literacy. We will be celebrating those people. They have achieved a certain level of literacy. They can read the Bible to a certain level. And then... We are also celebrating those who have been sustaining. They left at the literacy level and they went to post-literacy. We'll be celebrating them because you'll be able to see them. They're able to participate in some activities that we are bettering their lives, their, their learning skills. They're able to communicate in English, even if they don't have those KCP and KCSE. We are also bringing partners together to tell them, thank you, we were not able to provide this uh, literacy alone because in the policy, the Kenyan government policy, literacy is a shared responsibility. Just the same way the government is not able to provide formal education, you can see academies and other private providers, mm -hmm. so is literacy. We are not able to do it all alone. We want to celebrate those uh, people who have stood with us and helped us make the community literate in some way or the other. We are also calling now on partners. This is a forum where we are calling on partners. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you're doing so that our learners can reach you and tap into that. Mm -hmm. That is what we'll be looking at. And then we are also trying to mobilize more learners to come on board, to come and learn and see what you're doing and better themselves. So it's a day where we are celebrating so many things together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is your take on the same, madam? Yes, so... From the word international, it's world over. And we are not just celebrating the local learner. We are saying the world has realized that uh, literacy is very important. And it's a continuing uh, situation. It's not supposed to stop. So at whichever level, we want to celebrate, even us who are teaching, we mm -hmm. need to improve our skills. Mm -hmm. Maybe our learners have come in with new uh, challenges or uh, the, the uh, global right now, what is the new knowledge that we're supposed to embrace and to pass it to our learners. So everyone in their small area, uh, areas, uh, we are saying uh, today internationally, mm -hmm. whether you are in, in Cameroon, you are in Kenya, you are in Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, on the 8th of September, we are celebrating that there, there have been strides that have been made to achieve literacy. 
and that we you see it's good to celebrate yourself mm -hmm. yeah so we are saying that day is set aside mm -hmm. to celebrate that people have acknowledged that it is important to ensure that you are improving your knowledge every mm -hmm. now and then mm -hmm. so for adults mm -hmm. we are saying we appreciate the effort that you've made mm -hmm. and we acknowledge that it has not been easy mm -hmm. but let us celebrate you for coming out mm -hmm. yes and you're also bringing the new trends because we, we are tired of the, the young generation laughing at our parents going to class. We're going virtual. We yeah. even have virtual schools in Nairobi that are teaching learners all over the world. So we shall also be celebrating them and telling our learners, if your daughter or son doesn't want you to go to that school, you can learn from the comfort of your home. Mm -hmm. When this person comes home, we'll find you learned and you're ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now maybe briefly on that notion of virtual, we've said 80% um, of the senior citizens are not um, well diverse in terms to do, in matters to do with technology. How are they going to sit down and uh, learn virtually? And that's why we are saying our partners, we are going... Nairobi country are looking at how we are going to work with Safaricom and Airtel to come and because they are supposed to give back to the community. These people are using their network. We want them to come on board. We teach these seniors that a phone is not only for making a call or receiving a text message. You can use it for other things. You've had the Kenya Kwanzaa manifesto whereby internet shall be all over. So once the moment these senior citizens who are already learned, for example, and they retired, they'll be taught other skills on how to use the phone. Mm. And once that is done, mm -hmm. it is easier for this child, when this child comes home, mm -hmm. to even teach the mother, Mom, this is TikTok, you use it this way. This is uh, Facebook, it's used this way. This other app, you can use this way. Mom, you wanted to, you'll find even the youth embracing that instead of the mother going to school, they can learn digitally at home. So that is a, a work we are starting, and the more we, we, we make the, the uh, majority know that it is there, they will now have an interest, and we shall just handle the basic and bring them on board for post and go. Thank you so much, ladies, for coming in today and for the knowledge that you've accorded to our viewer today to be able to understand what is adults and continuing education. As we wind up, I'd like to get your parting shots. Starting with you. Thank you. Uh, to this end, uh, I'll encourage uh, anybody, any adults. And uh, currently we are seeing uh, teenagers dropping out of school. We are telling you there is hope. And in adult education, we are giving second chances. Just come with your child in our classes. You have an opportunity to learn with your child there if you do not have anyone to take care of your child back at home. Mm -hmm. So take advantage of this uh, opportunity. Come back, pursue your dream. Uh, the mistake you did is not the end of life. Mm -hmm. So you can still pursue your dream in our classes. And again, we are saying uh, the youths out there who wish to pursue whichever course and because of uh, maybe two or three grades, uh, uh, subjects, they didn't really get the minimum aggregate. Mm -hmm. Let them come back to our centers mm -hmm. and uh, they just register for the two subjects. I'll give an example for those who want to pursue nursing. You'll find that maybe there's a requirement of biology, a certain grade or uh, uh, maybe mathematics a certain grade, let them come and register for those two uh, subjects mm -hmm. and then they learn in our uh, centers and then when it gets to now um, uh, them sitting for the exams, they'll do the neck exams, which is uh, recognized uh, at the KMTCs. Mm -hmm. So we, we are calling them back. Mm -hmm. There is a lot in adult education. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much. And to you, madam. I have only two parting shots. One, mm -hmm. um, there are those people who scored a D and a D plus, and they've been wondering, can I be of use? 
our teacher certificate in adult education course is very friendly. We are opening registration, just come, we register you, we'll train you, get that certificate, you can work with it anywhere in NGOs and you'll be very useful to your own community and to yourself. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that I'm, my other parting shot is I want to make an invitation, a call to all. Seeing is believing. If you want to know what adult education is doing and what can do, just come to Mahanaim College on 8th of September, 2023. Come and see for yourself. You live there an encouraged person. We'll link you to our classes all over the country and even all over the county because adult education is offered in every county in Kenya. So I welcome you. Just come and see for yourself. Ask questions. Learn. Even if you want to learn virtually, we'll link you to where you can learn virtually. We link you to that college and it will be a very interactive session. Thank you so much, ladies, for coming in. And uh, I hope to see you again as we continue this conversation of adults and continuing education. Viewer, I hope you've learned as much as I have. I hope you've answered most of the questions that you had asked us on our social medias, on our text messages. Let's continue this conversation online across all our social media networks. That's GBS TV Africa. Our SMS line is 21144. Till next time, have a nice time. Goodbye.